Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Sarth and I'm coming to you today with a video on how exactly to prepare for phase three and Blackwing Lair. This video is gonna be a little more specific towards preparing for the raid and things you really wanna focus on getting as fast as possible. I did make a rogue prio guide for gear that you wanna focus on getting first as a rogue in the raid, but this is gonna go through pretty much everything you need to know about preparing for Blackwing Lair. Before I get into it, I've seen a lot of Reddit posts or guides and videos out there that go into what it takes and what the prep should be like. And there's a lot of great info out there, but there's also some misleading info. One thing you should really know is Blackwing Lair is known as a guild breaker, but that's not necessarily going to be because of the difficulty. It may, however, be because of the loot. Some of the Blackwing Lair items step it up quite a bit from what you're used to right now and these items will be highly contested throughout your entire guild. There'll be a lot of classes going for them, and there's even gonna be more classes going for items that you would've already been getting, like hunters going after Brutality Blade now that they can get 15 agility to weapon. So, before you really get into Black and Lair, before you delve into this, just go in with the mindset knowing that it's gonna probably be a little frustrating losing out on some of the best items, but eventually you will get everything. That's just the nature of Classic WoW, it takes a long time to get loot and it can be really frustrating. Another thing I want to quickly mention is, there's some guides out there telling you that you're going to need over 200, maybe over 300 fire resistance gear, and I'm just going to tell you honestly, flat out, that is not really true. Fire resistance gear can be helpful, but the way we play the game now is different than we did in actual vanilla, and some people will need fire resistance gear, some will need more and some will need less. I really wouldn't put too much stress on going for your fire resistance gear. Honestly, with full consumes and buffs, you probably won't even need any. So Blackwing Lair is coming out in less than two weeks. What can we do right now to start getting prepared? Well, right at the announce, they released the attunement. Getting attuned for Blackwing Lair is basically as easy as getting attuned for Molten Core. All you pretty much have to do is get to the end of a dungeon. Run into Blackrock Mountain, and if you go to the right outside of the Blackrock Spire entrance, you'll find this rare spawn called the Scar Shield Quartermaster. Once you kill him, he drops an item called Black Hand's Command, which gives you the quest for the attunement. Basically, all it asks you to do is go to the end of Upper Blackrock Spire and click the orb. This is really easy to do. You can either get the group together yourself and clear the entire dungeon, or you can even find somebody with a cleared dungeon already, run inside, click it yourself. This also means that you can have one person holding the raid lockout and cycling in every single person in your guild to get the attunement. You can also get it on all of your alts all at once. It's super easy. Get Blackwing Lair attuned right now so that you can enter the dungeon. Moving on. The next thing you can do right away is get your Onyxia Scale Cloak. The Onyxia Scale Cloak is pretty cheap. Honestly, you can find it for probably about 40 gold on your auction house, or your guild should have the mats and you can just supply the rune cloth for them to make it for you. Neff uses an ability called Shadow Flame, and if you don't have this cloak, you will die. So if you want to clear Blackwing Lair, you absolutely do need an Onyxia Scale Cloak on each of your characters. The next thing you can do to prepare for right now, if you haven't been doing this already, is stacking your consumables. You may have noticed that right at the announce of Blackwing Lair, consumables spiked in prices, and they're only going to go up even more the week before. Honestly, it's probably pretty late, I should have made this video earlier but you need to get the consumables right away. Melee are going to need Fafs for Razagor, you're going to need Restos for Chromagus. If you're Horde at least, you'll want your Mages and Locks to have Lips for the AoE phase on Neff. Things you might not have thought about, like Winter Squid going out of season, because it's actually a seasonal fish, so you're going to need to stock up on that, and you've probably already seen Shadow Pots go up. So if you're late to the game trying to get all of your consumables, what you want to focus on is either farming the mats yourself or farming money. If you haven't noticed already, Arcane Crystals and Arcanite Bars have gone up like crazy. That's because with this next phase, we get the release of Thunder Fury, probably the most memeable weapon in all of World of Warcraft history, and I think it's the most well-designed and best-looking weapon. Every single guild is going to want their main tank at least to have Thunder Fury. So that means that guild banks are spending a lot of money and guilds are spending a lot of time farming and buying as many Arcanite bars as they possibly can. That also means it's your chance to sell. 
If you have these stocked up, get ready to sell. If you haven't yet, start farming. Because if you're in a hardcore raid guild, you're going to be spending a lot of money on consumables these first few weeks. Honestly, on my server, Black Lotus themselves have doubled in price. So getting flasks is going to be ridiculous for these first few raids if you haven't farmed them already. The next thing you can start prepping for right now are actually the new profession items. With Phase 3, some of the best profession items in the game are actually being launched. That means blacksmiths are finally going to be able to craft Nightfall. Enchanters are going to get things like 22 Intellect and Enchant Weapon Agility. Things like that are going to be really huge for Hunters and Rogues. And also the new Bracer Enchants are coming out, which are Healing Power and MP5 to Bracers. Tailors are getting incredible items like Flare Core Leggings. Leather workers will be getting Corehound Belt and Molten Belt. All these items that I mentioned are the ones coming out to the professions that are core to all the progression and raid guilds out there. If you're really trying to min max at all, you will know about all of these items and your guild and you should be preparing to buy and make these items or craft them yourself. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the Dark Moon Fair. With the launch of the Dark Moon Fair comes the launch of the Dark Moon cards. And these are the most important things coming out of the Dark Moon Fair, and specifically, there's two you want to focus on Dark Moon Card Maelstrom and Dark Moon Card Blue Dragon. Dark Moon Card Maelstrom has a proc effect that does damage on attacks, and Dark Moon Card Blue Dragon, which this one is the one that is really important, has a 2% chance to proc a 100% mana regen. This is gonna be insane. It's a top healer trinket, possibly even a top mage farm trinket. Like I know we've seen people with the Mardon Dagger doing mage AoE farming and having infinite mana. The ace from this deck will drop off the beast in Ubers. You'll probably see a lot of people start running that, but you can't really prepare for these yet because the cards don't drop themselves yet. What you can prepare for in the Dark Moon Fair is actually to get the necklaces. There's two necklaces, one for melee and one for casters. The caster one does have spell power, so if you don't have Choker of the Fire Lord yet, it is pretty decent. I'm not sure exactly how it compares to Star of Mysteria for different classes. You'll have to figure that out yourselves. The melee one is really good for PvP. Each of these necklaces costs 1,200 tickets each, and you can start preparing for that now by getting the turn-ins for the tickets already. Things like Rugged Armor Kits, Thorium Widgets, dense grinding stones, and evil bat eyes. I put a little calculation on the screen of how many of each of these that you'll need to instantly buy the neck of your choice. So with the launch of phase three will come the class Sunken Temple quests. These are massively important for a few classes because there are a couple items that are best in slot pretty much throughout classic. Warriors are getting the diamond flask. Hunters are gonna get the devil sore eye Priests will be getting the Blessed Prayer Beads, and Shamans getting the Enamored Water Spirit. The Diamond Flask for Warriors is going to give you 150 attack power for the entire fight. One minute, that is crazy. Most fights in Molten Core don't last that long right now, and they're going to get even shorter. And then in Blackwing Lair, some encounters will last significantly longer than others. So if you're one of these classes, if you're not instantly in Blackwing Lair, or if they release this on the Tuesday before Blackwing Lair comes out, because BWL is coming out on a Thursday, that Tuesday, you're gonna to wanna to focus specifically on getting these items right away. With that, that pretty much covers everything you really need to do to prepare for Blackwing Lair in-game. Apart from that, you can actually get the Lunar Festival buff or you can get the Lunar Festival food, which will give you 4% mana and health per second, which is some BIS food, but I would actually save this food and stock it up because it does scale with gear. As we get even better gear, it will get even more powerful. Outside of that, the last things you could possibly do to get ready for Blackwing Lair's launch, and this is something that even if your guild is semi-hardcore, you should have been doing already, or you will do the week before Blackwing Lair, is learning all of the encounters. There's a crazy amount of guides out there. Some are better than others, so hopefully you have someone that either played on private servers or in vanilla that can kind of steer your guild in a good direction at which guides are the best. Things are obviously done differently in Classic WoW than they were in vanilla, and Blackwing Lair will probably be tuned a little easier than it was in private servers. So just knowing all of the encounters, everybody knowing their job, 
and this raid should be pretty much a cakewalk. This isn't really where World of Warcraft actually gets hard. All it is is a new raid that requires a little more coordination. Thank you guys again for watching. I will be trying to do a lot more videos now that my warrior is level 60. So if you have any questions or want to see a guide on anything, let me know in the comments. Please feel free to subscribe and hit the like button. It helps a lot. And I will also be streaming the launch of Blackwing Lair as we go for our server first. I guess right before I send you off, I should mention to you guys that <laughs> Black Rock Mountain is going to be a war zone. If your server is skewed towards one faction more than the other, they will probably dominate. I wouldn't put it past some multi-boxers or really coordinated guilds just rezzing all at once, sappering and wrecking people, losing all of their world buffs. So just be aware of that, be ready, and uh, I'll see you guys later.